Yes. You've had a falling out, an argument with a family member, a work colleague, or, or a friend. <laughs> I come from Essex, trust me, I've had a few. <laughs> we live in deeply worrying and fractious times right now. We live in a time of global upheaval. We are witnessing an American president that seems hell-bent on withdrawing American leadership from the global institutions and structures that grew up out of the ashes of World War II, where so many young, brave young men and women gave their lives, looking beyond their own reality, to envision a more united and prosperous future. Now more than ever, now more than ever, the world needs a strong, united, outward-looking and open-minded Britain at the heart of the European Union. <laughs> the world needs our leadership to face down the tyrants overseas. The world needs our leadership in climate change to make sure that we have a world worth passing on to future generations. The world needs our leadership to espouse values of dignity, integrity, individual liberty and prosperity. Now, now before coming out here today, I, I had a few people telling me not to do this. You know, as a Conservative, right outside party conference, quite antagonistic, is they ask, are you not afraid? Are you afraid that they'll ostracize you? Are you not afraid that they will revoke your party membership? And to them I say, no, I'm not afraid of that. But I tell you what would make me afraid. I would be afraid if I was a car plant worker and I didn't know whether or not my job would be here, whether my plant would be moved overseas and worrying sick, whether or not I could provide for my family. I would be afraid if I, was an in if I was a diabetic and I relied on insulin imports from across the European Union and needed open borders at the port of Dover. I would be afraid if I was an MP who, in who is in fear for their life because of the temperature of this conversation and the words that are used. I would be afraid if I was an EU national not knowing whether or not freedom of movement still exists after the 31st of October. I would be afraid if I was a young person staring the prospect in the face of being cut off from a continent I love and a unity I've always known. And of course I am a young person and that is what I fear, not speaking truth to power. <laughs> Of course, this is not a game. This is not the Conservative Party that I joined. This is supposed to be the party of opportunity, the party of business. The party has now descended into one of fuck business. The party of law and order is undermining the Supreme Court and is threatening to break the law. The party seems dead set on going into the most partisan general election campaign any of us have ever seen in pitting Parliament against the people. This is a wrecking tactic that doesn't just put the lives of MPs at risk, but it threatens to undermine the most basic tenet of our democracy. So yeah, we get it. It's a, it's a pretty bad time. I want to end on one quick positive note. And that is young people in the crowd here speaking today all over the country, out in their droves, really got involved in politics. We have shown, they have shown, that we are not just avocado toast eating spoiled millennials, but that we deeply care about the future of this country and we want to be involved in shaping that future for the better. We want to be involved in a new Britain, in a new European Union that involves people from all over, all different parts of life, up and down the country, so we never have this kind of mess again. Europe for us is about so much more than trade. It's about the right to live, to work, to study, to pray, to travel and love across 27 different 
countries. And I promise you today, we are not giving up on that anytime soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> not better. There was a young conservative, which is a smaller group of people that um, that are divided on Remain and um, obviously because it's divided the Tory party, hasn't it? It's an easy mistake to make. And it's this. So. Don't call him Boris. His name's not Boris. It's Alexander Boris is his middle name. All that I'm saying, it's just a part he's playing. For Mr. Johnson, everything is just a game. Don't call him Boris, cause he's not Boris. He's not a Muppet and he's definitely not your pal. For years he's grown a cuddly fake persona. And what few friends he still has left all call him Al. Cause Boris is an amiable old duffer. With his harumps and Latin tags and messy hair. He's everybody's mate. He's a dead old stick but wait. Boris isn't actually there. Don't call him Boris. His name's not Boris. Don't let him kid you, he's a lovable buffoon. Oh, he, he thinks he's genuinely nasty. And we might all find out how nasty pretty soon. Ladies and gentlemen, keep the energy going and welcome one of your own, your very own Manchester City Councillor, Sarah Judge.